Hollywood really doesn't understand artificial intelligence or even computers. When the tech isn't out there threatening to start nuclear wars or traveling back in time to kill Sarah Connor because something, 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 it's acting like a Greek chorus, generating impossible information and conclusions that no computer could ever generate. Back in the early 2000s, I co-founded the world's first online 3D render farm called ResPower, where 3D animators could upload their animations and have hundreds of computers work on it. Before cloud computing and virtual machines and all the rest, we dabbled in mesh computing, evolutionary algorithms, and occasionally AI neural nets. Mind you, I never considered myself as anything more than a coding neophyte, but even so I am fairly confident based on my admittedly limited experience that we are not going to create an all-powerful omniscient singularity anytime soon, or ever. Sorry, Scott Adams. The thing is this, even those artificial intelligences that are making headlines today, chat systems like ChatGPT or its more deranged cousin Bing AI, or image generators like DALL-E, Stable Diffusion, or voice generators like Eleven Labs IO, are really nothing more than data mining, coupled with a series of weight calculations to bridge knowledge gaps. Those weight calculations will make the chat systems hallucinate data that doesn't exist, or make weird hands, or other strange things that may make your demon radar system buzz and tremble. I know this will disappoint a lot of boomer technophiles out there, but we will never, ever achieve an omniscient singularity during our lifetime, or even many hundreds of lifetimes hence. Sure, we may be getting closer to a computer passing the Turing test, but we're not there yet. The Turing test, first described by Alan Turing in 1950, is a test for intelligence in a computer, requiring that a human being should be unable to distinguish the machine from another human by using the replies to questions put to both. We can't make a machine do this now for any prolonged amount of time, so why would anyone think we'd ever make a god in a box? Do I sound like Bill Gates claiming that 640 KB of memory should be enough for everyone? Or Digital Equipment Corp founder Ken Olson saying, there is no reason for any individual to have a computer in his home? Or how about Paul Krugman claiming that the internet is just a fad? Well, have a listen to my reason, then let me know what you think in the comments section below. If you were to boil that reason down into one word, that one word would be censors spelled with an S, not a C. There aren't enough sensors on the planet to generate enough data to make a computer-based omniscient creature. Your eyes and ears, nose and sense of touch are sensors. Your sentience and intelligence are due in large part to your sensors feeding you constant data, especially when you were young and just learning about the world. If you have children, you know exactly what I mean when I say that as babies they learned how to see, hear, taste and touch. Now look, we can build sensors for computers that surpass our own human ones, but we can't build enough to make AI omniscient. Even a cursory check of Bing AI or ChatGPT will show you that training an AI on data gleaned from the internets isn't enough. Working with a computer's great. I mean, it's, uh, it's godlike in a way. Because you can uh, have complete control. <laughs> That's good. Thanks. <laughs> You can see this problem more clearly with climate or stock market computer models, even those fueled by artificial intelligence. No matter how sophisticated the model, calculating what the world will actually be more than a few days into the future is impossible. And it will always be impossible because every model has to have a starting state. That starting state is and will always be an abstract, simplified representation of reality. No matter how many variables you try to account for, there will always be something left out. A butterfly flapping its wings in Africa. A random gamma ray burst from a distant imploding star thousands of light years away. Oprah Winfrey sneaking another cheeseburger. And so eventually the model goes off the rails and diverges from reality. It is inevitable. That's why the blessed climate St. Greta Thunberg had to delete a tweet she made five years ago that predicted a fiery death for us all today. Some computer model based on an abstract and inaccurate starting state swore up and down that we would all die in five years. Are you dead from global warming today? Maybe you need to double check. Some computer model out there said you would be and computer models are never wrong. The Heisenberg uncertainty principle, formulated by the German physicist and Nobel laureate Werner Heisenberg in 1927, states that we cannot know both the position and speed of a particle with perfect accuracy. Couple this with Heisenberg's observer effect principle, which states that the very act of observing a particle affects the behavior of that particle, and it then follows that it's impossible to accurately measure anything in our universe. And in a universe that is impossible to accurately measure, how exactly is your AI-powered computer model going to have an accurate starting state so that it can tell us what kind of movie we'll all want to jerk off to next year?
Notice I'm not even getting into issues of processor speed, parallel computing limitations, or the speed of light barrier that is impossible to break. That's because the lack of accurate data that you put into the box is enough to kill the electronic god fantasy. Which means that allowing a computer model, even one powered by artificial intelligence, to make decisions for us is ultimate folly. If a politician or bureaucrat starts talking about how a computer model shows that we must relinquish our freedoms to save the world, run for your life, because you cannot create God in a computer. Mr. McKittrick, after very careful consideration, sir, I've come to the conclusion that your new defense system sucks. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Oh, and by the way, could you tell that I cloned my voice using Eleven Labs AI software and used it to narrate this video? Let me know in the comments.